all right so good to be back welcome back to my channel my name is Sadson. in today's tutorial we're going to look at the implementation of the accordion so this is how it works click on this you see it unfolds click again and then it folds look at the far right here we have a plus sign if it unfolds it's a minus sign if it folds it's a plus sign we're going to use html css and javascript all right so let's jump into our project and waste no time so in my project right here i have an empty folder called accordion so you could just do the same create a folder and then open it in visual studio code the first thing we need to do is we need to create our structure so i'm going to click on that and then i'm going to name this index.html but of course you can name this whatever you want so hit enter you can see we have our file right here generate boilerplate code you can see we have our boilerplate code right here i'm going to name it accordion and then we're going to create an h2 with the title accordion all right so save this so to run this we need an extension called live server so go to your extensions check for live server and then go ahead and install live server once you're done right click in the html file and then open with live server go ahead and do that you can see now we have our accordion right here so let's look at our demo of course we're going to be guided by our demo we have a button right here with text on it so we need to create a button so to create a button yeah button and text one text two etc so we're going to give this a button a class of btn because we're going to use it in our javascript later on also in our css let's look at our demo if we click this we can see this thing right here this is a paragraph it's inside the div so we're going to say dot panel uh, which is a div and then inside that div we're going to have a, a paragraph with some dummy text so you can generate dummy text by writing lorem and it's going to generate the text for you so i'm going to do that twice so that we can have as much text we're going to duplicate this a couple of times so let me copy this and paste it down here again one more time paste it right here right, i'm going to change these other parts to text two take three so save that and check out in the browser we are on the right track we're going to style buttons and then make them look like this and then handle the other functionality so we're going to link our css up here just above the title we're going to say link it's going to be a css file style.css so create a file here called style.css and we are good here universal selector yeah, the browser is up, applying default styling and so we need to reset the browser right here so we can reset it by doing this in vessel selection box sizing this is the first one for the box and margin is going to be zero pixel heading is also going to be zero pixels so if we take a look into the browser now we can see we have reset our browser we can also reset the before and the after right here by selecting the before and also the after these are pseudo elements by the way you can check them out the next thing we need to do is our h2 which is our only heading that we have on our page we can say text align center and margin 15 top and bottom and then zero left and right so we can check that out our project you can see our coding is right right in the middle so we're getting on to the buttons we can check out the button we gave it a class of btn and so we can select that in our css dot btn the width of the button is going to be 100 percent we also need to give it a padding of 15 pixels top and bottom five pixels left and right take the line we're going to be left font size 18 pixels border and we set it to none and check that out now we are good we also have a hover effect right here so we're going to select our button and apply that hover dot btn hover and background is going to be hash super c our cursor is going to be a pointer so if we are to go back and now if we hover over you can see what's happening you can see here on our demo we have a plus sign so we're going to use hex codes so here i'm going to use latin basic for the plus sign we're going to use 002b which is our hex code for this 
and 2212 for the minus sign. We're going to target our pseudo element. So we can say dot button, don't be TN after. Okay, this will put an element after the button element. The content that we want to put is going to be that hexadecimal. We escape it with a backward slash and then we say 0022B. You can see text 1 plus, text 2 plus, text 3 plus. We want it pushed to the right. We want to float that to the right. We're going to give it a margin right. Margin dash right. 20 pixels so you can see now it's now in position with this we are set now we need to handle these paragraphs right here so we want to handle the click event once we click the button something must happen but you should also notice when we click in our demo this plus is changing to a minus so we need to handle that as well to handle the click event we need to use javascript let's go into our html and then link our javascript files just above the body the closing body tag so we're going to say script source and then we're going to name this script.js uh, you can name this whatever you want so we're going to create that here script.js and then inside here we need to be able to select the buttons it's not one button there are plenty of them so here we can say con we can create a variable called buttons here which is going to hold our buttons all our buttons and so we can say document dot query selector all because we are targeting more than one and it, it has a class called btn if you remember that we did this btn here we can confirm by logging this to the console and saying btn so we can check that out in our browser right click inspect this page check out the console console right here you can see we have our node list right here which is our three buttons. We want to listen for a click event. And so we're going to loop over each and every button. So we're going to say buttons, good for each button. And we want to do something with that button. We want to add an event listener. So dot add an event listener to that button. And the event that we're listening for is the click event. So if somebody clicks on that button, we're going to invoke this callback function, which is going to take an E an event we going to add an extra class if we look at our demo if i click on the button not only is it unfolding it's also changing this to a minus right so we need to handle that first so how do we change that to a minus we can go into our styles here create an extra class down here which we're going to call active and then we say after so just like we did with our button we added the content of a plus we can add a content here of a minus minus is backward slash 2212 in our javascript we're going to add this class right here on any button that has been clicked so here we can say e dot target class list then there we're going to toggle class code active which is the one that we created down here with a dot active after right here so let me save this and go back to our project so we are here on our project this is our project let me click this you can see the sign has changed to a minus here same here same if i click again plus 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 so you might be wondering what's what's going on here let me show you something if you go to your elements here expand this body right here i want you to look at this button the first button here if i click on that button see what's happening there is a class which is being added here now it has btn and active if i click again that class is removed the active class it's adding and removing same with that the other button click 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 it's adding and removing the active class this is what we specified with this line right here we, after we add this we're not only doing that right we are also showing the content so how should you show the content for now we can see the panel is visible if you look at this the panel is visible so how do we handle that we need to go back to our css style.css right here and I'm going to add a class called panel. Now we are working with this div right here. Depending top and bottom zero. Then left and right, I'm going to say 15 pixels. We need a max height now. 
control the height of that element and we're going to say it's going to be zero initially we're not going to be seeing that content so let me save and, and show you what i'm talking about you can see now what we have uh, let me close this first but of course there is some text showing down here this is the overflow so we need to handle that the overflow please make it hidden don't show that so if i save and check this out you can see now we no longer see that text but if we click it's just changing the sign to a plus or minus plus or minus we need it to unfold like we are doing on our demo here so for us to do that we need to play around with this so we're going to be playing around with this in our javascript so that we can show our text so for us to show our text down here inside the add event listener i'm going to say const panel to select the panel and we're going to change its max height of course but here we don't have access to that panel this panel here that we want to select here is going to be the panel that is next to the button that has been clicked if i click this button one here i should get this panel here if i click this i should get this panel here i think you get the idea so for us to do that we need to say e dot target which is the button that we have clicked right and then it has what we call next element sibling which is going to give us the next element to the button that has been clicked so if we click this button it means we're going to get this panel right here so this is the panel that we're going to get so we're going to check whether it has a max height or not if it does not have a max height we're going to apply the max height if it does have a max height we're going to remove that max height uh, to get the max height of this panel a panel dot star dot max height uh, by the way we use camel case and we're no longer using the hyphens like we're doing in, in css in javascript we use camel casing like this we can store this in a variable by the way const hdp if this height if there's a height on the element we want to remove it but if there's no height we want to put a height so here we can reverse this by saying if not height if there is no height on the element we're going to say panel dot style dot max height we're going to assign the max height on this panel element for now i'm going to just say 20 pixels so let's check this out click on that you can see we're seeing 20 pixels click on that 20 pixel click on that 20 pixels well of course this is not what we want we don't want 20 pixels we could say 300 pixels we could do that save and and check this out check that out check that out check that out it's working but you want to know how much content this is going to have you cannot just get a random number and put it here so how do you get the actual height of an element you can get it by using its scroll height we can target that panel and say we want its scroll height it's gonna give us its height you need to add the px right here that's how it works in css right we're saying 15 px if we just say 15 then it's not gonna work and so the same here you need to add that px unit so if i'm to save this now click on that you can see now it's showing up click on that it's now showing up click on that it's now showing up however in our demo here if we click it's showing up and you click again it's then folding it but here it's just showing up it's not folding how do we fold that we fold it by putting an else block here now if it has a max height we're going to say panel dot style dot max height and we're going to set that now again which is a zero which is similar to zero so we do that check it out click on that it's it's unfolding click on that it's now folding click on that unfolding folding unfolding folding and so basically this is how you implement this accordion in your javascript all right so i want to thank you for your time you can leave a like leave a comment you can also consider subscribing to the channel i hope to see you in my next tutorial for now i'm out cheers